In this application problem, we are given the function that tells us the number of jobs that are outsourced by some U.S. companies, um, where T represents um, the years, where T equals zero represents 2005, and the function looks like it's good for 2005 to 2009. So the jobs are given in millions. So the number of jobs outsourced in millions as a function of the year. I want to know how fast was the number of jobs um, that were outsourced changing in 2008 when t was equal to 3. So how fast tells me I'm looking for a rate of change. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the formula for derivative. We're going to do this uh, one term at a time. So we're looking at the first term. The first term has a group of terms raised to a higher power. So to find the derivative of this first term, I'm going to need to use the chain rule. So this is 2.2, that's the exponent there, 2.2. 2.2 times negative 0 0.05, um, I get negative 0 0.11. We're going to write the inside function as is, so that's t plus 1.1. We're going to reduce the exponent by 1, so 2.2 minus 1 would be 1.2. Then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is just 1. All right, so now we can move on to the next two terms, or we take the derivative of each term separately. The next term is 0.7 times t. The derivative of that, of course, would just be 0.7. The last term is a constant. The derivative of a constant is 0, so I'm not going to put plus 0. I'm just going to stop right there. I'm going to make this look a little bit nicer. I don't need to write times 1, but I am going to bring down the point 7. So this is our derivative. We want to find the derivative of, well, we want to find how fast the number of jobs outsourced was changing in 2008. So we want to know the rate of change when t equals 3. So I'm going to put 3 into the derivative in place of t. And what I recommend doing is go ahead and before you put this into your calculator, I'd recommend going ahead and adding what's in the parentheses. That would be a little bit easier there. Okay, and then you can type it into your calculator um, almost as you see it there. Uh, remember that when you do put this into your calculator, you want to use a little caret symbol, and I would put this in parentheses. Okay, and I get point zero or zero point one zero one nine five five seven five eight one. Now remember this is representing millions of jobs per year. To make this number look a little bit nicer, um, I'm going to go ahead and multiply by a million so I can figure out what fraction of a million is this. So in, if I multiply this by a million, that moves my decimal place six spaces to the right. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to go ahead and round to the nearest whole job. So that would round this up to uh, that would round that up to six. So what we're really saying is that at this in this year we are losing or a little bit over a hundred thousand jobs per year to outsourcing. So that's the rate of change in the year two thousand and eight. Um, in our last example here for the chain rule, uh, we're going to use the chain rule to actually calculate the derivative here, um, talking about the pollutant standard index. So here we're given a function that uh, approximates the pollutant standard index, where t represents hours. t equals zero corresponds to 7 a.m., so let's 
write this down here. T equals 0 corresponds to 7 a.m. T equals 1 corresponds to 8 a.m. T equals 2 corresponds to 9 a.m. Um, T equals 3 corresponds to 10 a.m. T equals 4 corresponds to 11 a.m. and so on. I'm going to stop right there. So we're asked to find uh, the derivative of our given function a. So let's go ahead and do that. So part a, we're going to find the derivative of our given function. So we're going to have to be careful about something here. The function is 0 0.03 times t cubed. So that's t cubed. And then we have in the parentheses t minus 7 raised to the power of 4. So we notice something here. We have a variable and then we have a group of terms with a variable in it raised to a higher power. This is going to be the product rule and then we'll also have to incorporate the chain rule um, within the product rule. So we're going to start out with the product rule for that first term. Okay. So we have the first which is 0 0.03 t cubed so it's going to be the first times the derivative of the second. So I'm going to put this in red. So the second is t minus 7, all of that in parentheses raised to the power of 4. So if I'm going to take the derivative of that, then I'm going to have to use the chain rule to take the derivative of that. So we're going to say 4, we're going to bring the power to the front, t minus 7, reduce our power by 1, and then we'll multiply by the derivative of the inside. Since it's just t minus 7, then the derivative of that is just 1. Okay. So there's the first, which is here, times the derivative of the second, plus the second, as is, times the derivative of the first. So I'm going to take the derivative of what's in this black box right here. So that would be power rule, 3 times 0 0.03. Okay, we have to be careful with our our decimals here. Um, I get 0 0.09 and reduce the power by 1 that gives me t squared. All right. Um, so the last term we would want to take the derivative of that but what's really nice about that is that that's a constant and we know the derivative of that is 0 and so we're not going to write plus 0. We don't need to do that. All right. So I'm going to try to make this look a little bit nicer because we're going to use it to evaluate some values. So I'm going to multiply all the one term factors together out front. So that gives me 0.12 t cubed times t minus 7 to the third power times 1 of course but times 1 doesn't change anything. Um, and then I'm going to bring this out to the front as well. So I'm going to bring the monomial 0 0.09 t squared out front of t minus 7 raised to the power of 4. So there's our derivative. And simplified so that we can use it pretty easily. Now we're asked to find uh, the derivative with 1 as t, our t value. Plug in a t value of 3 and a t value of 4. So let's plug in 1 in place of t. And I think in this case I would do a little bit of simplification before I put it into my calculator. Uh, 1 cubed is 1, so I'm not going to multiply in a 1, not going to change anything. Um, and then 1 minus 7 is negative 6 cubed, so that will make that easier to type in. Plus, and then 1 squared is 1. So I'm not going to write that, multiply that in, and then I have negative 6 to the power of 4. So if you simplify a little bit before you put it into your calculator, and then we're basically going to put it into our calculator right as we see it, um, I get a value of 90.72 um, as the answer when I put 1 into my derivative. All right, and it says here that we need to interpret our results. So let's go back up here. Okay, so t we said represents hours. 
So our derivative is talking about the difference in A, so the difference in the output values with respect to the difference in the input values. So we're talking about change in hours and what is the output talking about? It's talking about the pollutant standard index. Okay, so how is the pollutant, we'll call that the P SI, the pollutant standard index, how is that changing with respect to time? So it looks like since we get a plus, a positive value out, that the pollutant standard index is increasing by 90.72 um, units, we'll call that units, um, per hour. Okay, we'll think about that as over one, so per hour. So at T equals one, that's eight o'clock in the morning. At eight o'clock in the morning, the pollutant standard index is rising by 90.72 units per hour. Okay. So we wanna know what's happening when T is equal to three. So when T is equal to three, we're gonna put a three in place of and once again, I would recommend that you simplify a little bit before you type on into your calculator. Three cubed is 27. Three minus seven is negative four. Three squared is nine. And then negative four to the fourth. It makes it a little bit nicer when you type it into your calculator. And I actually end up getting uh, zero here. So that means that the pollutant standard index is not increasing at this point. It looks like at this hour, so when t equals three, let's go back and remind ourselves at 10 a.m., in other words. So this was 8 a.m., and this is 10 a.m. It looks like at 10 a.m., the pollutant standard index is not rising at all. It looks like it levels off. So at 10 a.m., there is no increase in the pollutant standard index. Okay, this is basically would be when the pollutant standard index would reach its maximum, if you want to think about it like that. All right, the last thing that we're asked to find here is uh, a prime of four. So we're going to put a four into our derivative, and this basically is representing 11 a.m., so a prime of four. We're going to put that into our derivative again. I'm going to simplify just a little bit there before I put that into my calculator. Um, four cubed is 64. That would be negative three cubed. Uh, that would be 16, and then negative three to the power of four. Okay, whatever you wanna do. You wanna throw it all in like this or like this. I like to simplify a little bit before I throw it in. It kinda keeps things a little bit easier. Um, and then when I put this in, I get negative 90.72. So this tells me that the pollutant standard index is going down. So it's decreasing by 90.72 units per for every hour. So at this point in the day, at 11 a.m., the pollutant standard index is going down. It's decreasing, which I think would be a good thing there. Um, it's decreasing at negative 90.72 units per hour.